Hi, I'm Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle, here to tell you about the Innovate Mound Project. Mound Road is home to one of the country's most densely populated manufacturing corridors. It is an economic powerhouse that supports more than 200,000 jobs in Macomb County and across the state. Because Mound Road is home to businesses leading the way in new technologies for the defense and automotive industries, we've decided to position it as a smart technology corridor by engaging numerous partners and local stakeholders to help make it happen. Historically, Mound Road has been significant in the manufacturing of uh, materials for the United States. It started out in World War II with tanks and with other equipment for the military. And after that, it sprang out into other types of production of cars and aerospace and other things. Dozens of pictures flooding into our newsroom of the car-eating craters popping up across Metro Detroit. Three years ago, I was, uh, we were all sitting in a conference room and talking about Mount Road and how, how bad of a shape it is in and how all the band-aids that we, you know, multi-million dollar band-aids we put on Mount Road is not working and we needed really a reconstruction of Mount Road. Uh, that was required and uh, those things tend to be a little expensive when you have four lanes in each direction and multiple miles. So um, we were planning on putting together uh, a grant and one of the exciting grants that we found was the Infra Grant, which is a national level competition for um, funds. One of the things that we discovered as we got into the corridor and started meeting with the manufacturing firms is there's a lot of collaboration between the companies. Um, there's also companies that make parts for other companies that are in the corridor. Uh, we received a lot of complaints that their just-in-time deliveries to the major manufacturers were damaged by the cracks and the potholes in the road, and that if those things were not fixed, they would be gone. So right from the beginning, we had collaboration with the manufacturing firms because they wanted to stay. They knew the importance of the corridor, they knew the importance of the location, and they were willing to come and work with us to find that funding. So we went to Washington, D.C. together. We wrote the grant together. We promoted it, and, there, and that was the large influence of getting the grant. We received a, a grant of around $98 million. Uh, to reconstruct the road, it's about $200 million. So we reached out to our partners in the city of Sterling Heights, the city of Warren, and we developed a partnership of funding that additional money. Um, and this was the way that we could rebuild the corridor in about three years. The crown jewel of our technology advancements in the county is really Comtech, the Communications and Technology Center for uh, which has the traffic operations center. That's where all the operations when it's rela uh, related to traffic happens. That's where all the video and all the data is going in. As a part of this project, we are also creating what's known as a data lake, which is basically a repository of all this data. And all this data could be harnessed to make things better for traffic operations. For example, so all the, uh, if there are uh, connected vehicles flying through uh, Mound Road, that data gets stored, uh, that comes back to the Traffic Operations Center through our fiber network, which also we are installing as a part of this project. It comes back to uh, the Operations Center. Now we know if there is delays on Mound Road. For example, if uh, we see that the connected vehicles are running um, slower than what they should be on a certain section of Mound Road, for example, maybe 15 mile to 16 mile. So our operations engineers can immediately look at our cameras to see if there's anything happening. And if indeed we can do something, for example, change traffic signals on, on the fly, we can do that because of all the data that is coming back to our traffic operations center, to Comtech. 
So that's another big aspect of this project where we are creating this data lake or a repository of all this data which can help us in a, a myriad of ways to make traffic uh, flow better on Mound Road, to reduce traffic crashes and improve mobility on Mound Road. The Innovate Mound team always looks forward to meeting face-to-face -face with the public to share information and answer questions about the project. However, to keep everyone safe during the COVID-19 pandemic, we will be hosting two virtual public meetings. We're calling them Innovate Mound 201. You'll be able to participate by computer on Zoom or by dialing in on your phone. You'll have the opportunity to learn more details about the project and to talk with our team. The first meeting will be held on Tuesday, November 10th from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. The second will be held on Thursday, November 12th from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. You can join the meeting online or by phone using the information on the screen. This information can also be found on the Innovate Mound website at www.innovatemound.org. You can also reach our team by phone at 1-855-MOUND-4-U or 1-855-6668-6368. We hope that you will join us on Tuesday, November 10th or Thursday, November 12th at one of the Innovate Mound 201 virtual public meetings. Thank you for your interest in Innovate Mound. <laughs> Do you remember the Jetsons? Obviously, a lot of us uh, remember the Jetsons and, and the futuristic cars, the flying cars, the autonomous cars. Autonomous cars are the future um, in this country too and in this world today. So it'll be driverless cars up going up and down. Uh, it's probably 10 years away from uh, where we are right now, but we are preparing Mound Road for autonomous vehicles by instrumenting everything that is required for autonomous vehicle operation on our roadways for testing and for real operations too. They're also getting cues from uh, non-technology elements like signs and like pavement markings. The autonomous vehicles need to be positioned in, in a safe manner within the lane, and that's defined by the lane lines, as simple as white lines or yellow lines on our roadways, which we are planning to um, make it much bigger, go from four inch to six inch uh, markings, which much more reflectivity, so that uh, autonomous vehicle um, sensors can sense where they are uh, even, even better than before, so that those operations can be more efficient. Uh, we are going to put um, high reflectivity traffic signs on, on Mound Road, which will reflect light back to the autonomous vehicle in such a way that it knows uh, what's the speed limit, or it knows if it is coming up to a stoplight even before, much, f much ahead of time than what it used to be in the past. So these are some of the small things that we are doing and all the, also the big technology innovations that we are doing in communications, in sensors, in instrumenting the whole uh, roadway so that it can, it can be futuristic and also future-proof. Mound Road Corridor, um, I believe, uh, is one of the most densely populated business districts in the country today. So you have more density of uh, businesses and manufacturing plants and everything on the east side of Mound Road um, along the corridor. And so the, the Innovate Mound project is going to uh, also include elements which are technology rel related that can help manufacturing and just-in-time processes. And just-in-time, of course, is uh, basically a supplier um, has to uh, deliver their parts for an assembly line, for example, 
within a certain uh, time window and uh, if, if not then it upsets the whole manufacturing processes uh, and with the OEM and uh, the, there, there's a lot of repercussions on that. So to help that we are instrumenting Mount Road with enough technology to enable what's known as traffic signal priority. Uh, which is basically certain classes of vehicles will gain priority as they progress through the corridors at traffic signals. So an example of that is uh, say there is a vehicle or a truck which is leaving the supplier and it's already behind schedule and now on Mount Road, uh, say a 10 mile road and they have to reach 17 mile road. Um, with the, the delays in the schedule, they may not be able to make it because of the traffic signals and the delays uh, that normally occur on the corridor. But the technology that we will be installing on Mount Road will enable us uh, or enable the system, like the traffic signal, to recognize that there is a truck which is behind schedule which is coming up Mount Road. So as it approaches the intersections now, it can do two things. One is what's known as an extension of a green, which is if the truck arrives at the last second of the green, it extends the green for another 10 seconds so that the truck can pass through on a green and make its way through to 17 mile in this example. Or say a 12 mile road, it's, there's already a red, red light and then it comes up to the red light. Um, so the system recognizes that there's a truck coming up which is behind schedule and reduces the red light by 10 seconds or so so that that delay is cut out from the, its journey to the to the OEM's uh, manufacturing area, so that's the simple way of putting uh, traffic a traffic signal uh, priority. <laughs> On the other side, we could have what's known as the traffic signal preemption which is a hard stop or a hard uh, operation that happens. For example, that, can, that is reserved only for the emergency vehicles and the fire trucks, for example, where the fire truck coming along the corridor is responding to an emergency, um, say somebody having a heart attack. Um, so as it comes, comes through, if the light is red for them, the system automatically detects there is an uh, emergency vehicle coming through. It turns the light to green truncating the, the red for the other uh, direction and then has, you know, gives this uh, progression of green lights all through the corridor so that the response time for this emergency vehicle is reduced by much large, mar uh, by, by a substantial amount which would save uh, lives. For example, this person having a heart attack now has the, the, the EMS and the EMTs uh, attending to them minutes before, um, you know, before they would normally arrive, so to say. So, um, with non-motorized and uh, pedestrians, uh, one of the aspects of non-motorized and pedestrians is transit. So we are working with the transit agency. Currently, they do not have a route on Mount Road, but they do have a route on Van Dyke. And a lot of the pedestrians um, that choose to get to the manufacturing plants use Van Dyke. So as a part of this project, we are trying to look at these last mile innovations. For example, there could be an auto autonomous uh, uh, small vehicle that takes people from the bus stop on Van Dyke to Mound Road to drop them off. And then this shuttle kind of runs just back and forth, back and forth. Uh, you know, between the bus stop and the, the, these uh, manufacturing plants or major businesses along Mount Road. That's an example of what we are considering for uh, pedestrians. Futuristic uh, applications for pedestrians also include, you know, uh, we are looking at them, but we don't know whether we'll be, we'll be ready for them. By the time uh, people are ready for it, then it'll all already be there. For example, traffic signals, you could talk to traffic signals using your smartphone. So instead of going to the signal and then pushing the push button, you could invoke the signal as you're coming up, say, a trail. And uh, you are, say, 50 meters away from the, from the trail, 
you take your smartphone out and then you do a, a press uh, press the button. It's as good as pressing the button at the intersection. So by the time you get to the intersection, you already have the walk signal, and then you can go through. That's a small example of what could be done in the future. The Innovate Mound team always looks forward to meeting face to face with the public to share information and answer questions about the project. However, to keep everyone safe during the COVID-19 pandemic, we will be hosting two virtual public meetings. We're calling them Innovate Mound 201. You'll be able to participate by computer on Zoom or by dialing in on your phone. You'll have the opportunity to learn more details about the project and to talk with our team. The first meeting will be held on Tuesday, November 10th from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. The second will be held on Thursday, November 12th from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. You can join the meeting online or by phone using the information on the screen. This information can also be found on the Innovate Mound website at www.innovatemound.org. You can also reach our team by phone at 1-855-MOUND-4-U or 1-855-668-6368. We hope that you will join us on Tuesday, November 10th or Thursday, November 12th at one of the Innovate Mound 201 virtual public meetings. Thank you for your interest in Innovate Mound. When you get to drive on the new Innovate Mound world, you will instantly see the difference because we would have, you know, modernized and improved the signals. We would have synchronized them so that when you drive on Mount Road and you drive at the right speed limit, you will not be stopped at every major mile intersection. And so that will help to decrease congestion, that will also help to increase safety, and that will also help with the climate change and you know mobility because there is not as many stop and go along the roadway. Well, the crossovers, what we've done, we've done some land use study. We looked at the corridor. We looked at how it operates now. And one of the things we realized, one of the, uh, one of the facts that the analysis revealed is that some median, some crossovers where you have them now are no longer as effective as they used to be because the land use has changed along the corridor, although the corridor itself, the roadway hasn't changed. And so you have some pockets where it wasn't as safe or as efficient to be turning around on Mount Road. And so what we've done, we've looked at that and we've readjusted the location so that it falls, falls more in sync with how they use the land is being used along the corridor. And so that increased safety as well and operations too. But you know what you'll notice also, not only is it going to be easier and safer to drive, but you also will notice that it is a lot more pleasant looking than what you see today. As an example, the landscape, we will have a nice, well thought out landscape concept for the entire corridor. And so we're unifying the corridor by having consistent landscape, but also like the lighting along the corridor. Right now we have lighting in the median, in some areas we have it on the sidewalks. Now we will have all the lighting in the median and they will all look the same from you know, 696 northerly to M59. And so that also brings calmness and that also brings a sense of community and corridor, you know, in beautification to the corridor. We've also improved the pedestrian uh, access and non-motorized access along Mon Road and also across Mon Road. We have now a new sidewalk for the entire length of Mon Road from 696 to M59. And, uh, so, and also we've also improved the crossroads for pedestrians to make them safer to go across from the west side to the east side. And that also facilitates people who are walking towards bus stops that are located along the corridor and also 
or, or at Venn Dyke, along Venn Dyke where you have a more extensive views of transit. Our project engineers and designers possess a great deal of professional expertise and technical excellence. But this is a community-driven project. To that end, we have touched all aspects of the corridor, whether you be a resident, a business, small business, industrial, manufacturer, uh, community center, you name it. We want to hear from you. And we have, we have done, uh, I think, a very robust job in reaching out to the community and getting that community feedback, that stakeholder feedback that is essential to delivering a quality product. My first interaction with the Innovate Mound team was a letter I received in the mail with our concerns of getting off of our street onto Mound Road. The concerns of getting off of our street onto Mound Road um, during certain times of the day. To get northbound, it would literally take us maybe about 15 minutes to try to get across the southbound lanes onto northbound. When we had a meeting with the Innovate Mound team, they did ask for our concerns and any suggestions on a way to make it easier for us to get off of our street, since our street is a dead end and Mound Road is the only way off. The meeting went really well. Um, they listened to all our ideas. Uh, they gave suggestions. They talked with us. Um, they talked back and forth, and we came up with some ideas, and I'm hoping they use some of them. <laughs> we did get a letter hand-delivered to our residents, and there were some ideas that they took into consideration and they laid out a, a plan and they're hoping to go with it. The greatest concern was going to be that we are going to be affected by all three of our businesses since we are all located on Mount, starting from 11 mile going up to 15 mile. The Innovative Mound team literally came into our businesses. We had two or three different visits at the different stores and they were on foot actually telling us that they're here to represent this project. We were going to be getting communications so that we would know when they popped up in our emails what it was about. And I found that to be very personable, especially in these times when everything is so text and, and, and emails and it was nice to have a face and project brought, brought to us. I'm excited about the Mound construction because we along with our customers have been dealing with some very very bad road conditions. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Sterling Heights resident so that is not only for work but my everyday life and uh, unfortunately there's been times I've avoided Mount for those reasons and so I'm excited about what's going to be coming forward. We're getting a lot of information that's helping us kind of ease some of our concerns as far as business so the excitement is there um, and, and, and we're looking forward to it. The team is making great progress on the Innovate Mound project. Right now we've completed about 30% of the new road design. We've done this with input from many residents, businesses, and others who have shared their thoughts and ideas with us. Next spring we will be selecting a contractor who will be responsible for the completing the design and building the new Mound Road. The selection process has already started with requests for qualifications issued to industry this past summer. The plan is to begin the construction of the road project summer of 2021. The contractor will confirm important details such as the exact date the construction will begin, where it will begin and how it will progress, plus other details such as how traffic will be maintained during the construction process. We expect to be able to give you this information in more detail uh, late spring of 2021. A reconstruction project of this magnitude is expected to have a major impact on those who use this corridor. Upon completion in 2024, it promises to be a world-class, state-of-the-art technology corridor that will embrace futuristic road and traffic technologies, making it safer for everyone. Working together, Macomb County and the cities of Sterling Heights and Warren are making an investment to create one of the most modern, efficient, reliable transportation corridors that will help provide safer travel and sustain future economic growth. The Innovate Mound Project will move Macomb County into a new era of transportation innovation. 
For more information, visit InnovateMound.org. Mound team always looks forward to meeting face to face with the public to share information and answer questions about the project. However, to keep everyone safe during the COVID-19 pandemic, we will be hosting two virtual public meetings. We're calling them Innovate Mound 201. You'll be able to participate by computer on Zoom or by dialing in on your phone. You'll have the opportunity to learn more details about the project and to talk with our team. The first meeting will be held on Tuesday, November 10th from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. The second will be held on Thursday, November 12th from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. You can join the meeting online or by phone using the information on the screen. This information can also be found on the Innovate Mound website at www.innovatemound.org. You can also reach our team by phone at 1-855-MOUND-4-U or 1-855-668-6368. We hope that you will join us on Tuesday, November 10th or Thursday, November 12th at one of the Innovate Mound 201 virtual public meetings. Thank you for your interest in Innovate Mound.